Hello and welcome to the Hamptons Health Hotline. I am Mirella Cameron Riley and I'm delighted that you're joining us today. I'm also delighted to have a wonderful guest with me and we're going to make sure that today we look into a top, the topic of New Year, New You. Now as you know the Hamptons Health Hotline is a hotline to you about all things to do with health and it's brought to you by the Southampton Hospital Foundation. We want you to know about the wonderful experts who are working in your community, who have um, great information. They know about the latest treatments, the latest trials, the best way forwards, um, the best way to reduce risk when it comes to the most important issues in healthcare today. We'll, we look at cancer, heart disease, diabetes, mental health, and all these really important issues. But the hotline is also a hotline to us. And we want to know what you are worried about and what you would like us to think about and to answer. So please send us your questions. It's really easy to get in touch. All you need to do is send, us, is send your questions to us um, on social media via Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're at the Southampton Hospital Foundation and all the links will be at the end of this program. So as I said, I'm so happy to have David Waters, who's come from the city to be with us today. David's had an amazing career um, in health, in, in all kinds of fields. He brings a lot of different knowledge to, um, to the table today to talk about the, the new year, new you, with a question mark, because that's what we're going to look into. Um, but anyway, let's talk to David and find out how he's, how he's come here today and what his journey's been, um, socially and professionally, that, 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 that he's with us. Thanks, Morella. Um, I have come here, well, I've come here literally from New York City yes, this morning on the train. And um, I work, I mean, back in the UK where I'm from, I qualified as a psychotherapist over 12 years ago. And I did further training, particularly to work with couples. Mm -hmm. So that's an area I'm really interested in. Here in the city, I work more in the corporate sector and I work uh, as an executive coach and also coach individuals as well. So I help, help people really with change, getting them on board with the change they want to make and really supporting them mm -hmm. as they move forward. Whatever that change might be, it might be a health change, it might be a lifestyle change, it might be a career change, whatever that change might be. I also write, I mean, my background before I became a therapist was uh, a journalist. I, w I worked for Men's Health magazine in the UK for many years. Um, so the idea of both physical and mental health has been really central to so much of what I've done. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the work I do. It came to me in a very circuitous way, in a, in a way, very sadly, I had a relationship which ended, um, which put me into therapy and I mm -hmm. needed support, um, mm -hmm. which was not something I ever thought I would ever need. And a friend said, I think you need to talk to somebody. And I was like, really? Um, and it was amazingly beneficial. And in fact, it inspired me to train to become a therapist myself. So I thought, wow, wow that was so helpful for yep. me uh, to manage a, what was a very difficult period in my life that um, it was just a wonderful area for me to explore myself. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit like coming home. I remember my very first training session um, as a therapist and it was about learning how to listen mm -hmm. and to really show someone that you're listening and I remember sitting there thinking is this just not a life skill we should all be learning absolutely and so much of that training for me was just really learning wonderful life skills mm -hmm. how you connect to other people mm -hmm. how you really show someone that you empathize with their story um, that you really can follow them with what they've gone through um, and that you really are there kind of symbolically and literally hand-holding with them. Mm -hmm. It's such a powerful and useful tool to have in life mm -hmm. for all of our relationships. Mm -hmm. So that's really what inspired me to get involved in this world, particularly of mental health and coaching and therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a world I really love. Good. Well, well um, I think it's, um, it's so interesting when something happens which isn't so good and suddenly a door opens and then there's a whole new opportunity that maybe you wouldn't have come across. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't have put that better myself, Maria. I think, you know, challenges happen all the time, bumps mm -hmm. in the road, problems, difficulties, whatever. It's very hard to see it at the time, mm. but often they're also offering up mm. opportunities. Um, and if we can just stay with them, we can sit with it, we can manage the difficult feelings around the problem mm. that we might be going through 
there will always be some kind mm -hmm. of silver lining somewhere in there, even yeah. if it's just about how we might learn something about mm -hmm. ourselves, mm -hmm. about how we got over a particular difficulty and mm -hmm. how that would really strengthen us and empower us for facing a similar challenge in the future. Right, right, because it's, an, it's the, you know, life is a series of ups and downs. And it's funny how, um, you know, on January the 1st, it's such a, it's just one day in the year but we always use it as a way to say, today I'm going to make these now massive gonna, changes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I kind of love that. I love that sense yeah. of the new year. Yeah. New year, new me. Yep. I'm going to do this, this thing I've never done before. I'm going to challenge myself to get fit or to right. lose some weight or whatever yep. it might be. Um, but I think, you, I think you have the statistics. I mean, the, the, the drop-off rate is huge. It's huge. 80% decide to get healthier of us. And I include myself. <laughs> and... 80% of us by mid-February have stopped or feel that, feel that we have failed and given up. So it lasts the new year for a lot of us lasts for six weeks. Um, and we That's a lot of gym memberships, isn't <laughs> it's it? It's very expensive. I think expensive. gyms are probably rubbing their hands with glee because they just think yes. there's a lot of new people coming on and board. And now probably online fitness services and right, food absolutely. delivery services and the whole industry. And um, we talked about... You know, change doesn't just happen, have to happen on January 1. Of course Change not. has to be an ongoing thing. But how, how do we got, uh, get ourselves, so how do we talk to ourselves? What do we tell ourselves? Uh, what words do we use to really help us to, to make those changes? I think, you know, I think you picked up on a, something really important, the, the, the way we describe what we're trying to do to ourselves. You know, when we use words like, I have to, mm -hmm. or I must, mm -hmm. or I'm going to get fit no matter what, right. you know, it feels like we're really galvanizing mm -hmm. ourselves and we're really kind of inspiring ourselves, which to a degree we probably are. Mm -hmm. How, however, there's also a kind of trap within that kind of language because it implies, well, if I don't quite mm. achieve that, if I don't make it to the gym three times a week, whatever the aspiration is, mm -hmm. then somehow we're a failure mm -hmm. and we've let ourselves down mm. and I'm actually, you know, just like the year before, I right. just, you know, and I'm, and I'm rubbish and I'm just going to go and buy some donuts and <laughs> put my feet up and slob out on the sofa. It does sound good though. Uh, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> um, and of course, if we're gentle with ourselves, saying, "Well, I, I'm going to try and get fitter." Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm. You know, I'd I'd like to run three times a week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will. Maybe sometimes I run four times a week, or mm -hmm. even five. Mm -hmm. And maybe one week I'll only run twice a week. Uh -huh. But that's okay. Right. You know, because the the overall trajectory is moving True. in the direction that I want it to move in, mm -hmm. rather than setting ourselves these very kind of rigid mm. set of expectations, mm. which if we don't achieve them, then therefore, well, what's the point? I can't right. do it now. I've I failed. And that sort of terrible sort of self-critical voice mm. can really kick in. So I think a gentler voice about, I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. I would like this to happen. I'm going to do my best. These kind of, you know, encourage us to point us in the right direction. But it also means if we slip one day or we don't quite do the 20 minutes extra we mm. set ourselves out to do, whatever, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And we can still kind of keep going in that general direction rather than beat ourselves up that we really didn't do it. And therefore, mm. what's the point? So it's a bit like the half glass empty, half glass full, like celebrating the fact that you did get out twice that week yeah, for the absolutely. run. Yeah, absolutely. But sometimes it's hard to be in that positive mindset. You may, maybe if we change our language and our vocabulary around it, but what other things can we do to, to think like that? To think, well, you know, I did do those two runs or I, I did have, I ate really well most of the day. I only had one donut, <laughs> yeah, you know? Right. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it, it, it's to your point, I mean, absolutely, we achieve things all the time. We tend to, and it's, it's an interesting sort of psychological state, it's called the negative bias. Mm -hmm. You know, we go into a room mm -hmm. full of people and everyone's perfectly friendly to us and there's just that one person who mm. maybe has a slightly off comment or has a slightly odd expression on their face when they look at us. And we fixate on yeah. that. And we leave the party, we're going... God, that was awful. Mm -hmm. That person, you know, that was, I was really uncomfortable. And actually, 99.9% .9 of that experience was positive. Right. And we fixate on the one negative. Mm -hmm. So I think the same with like trying to make positive change in your life. You know, do not fixate on the one thing you did, which was maybe not quite what you wanted to be doing, but really praise yourself for the things that you have achieved. Okay. You know, so it's kind of changing the emphasis. The other thing which I think, and I'm, I'm a great fan, I mean, social media in some ways gets a lot of criticism, but I think 
one area that social media is really powerful and helpful is really galvanizing your community and your support network to help you with mm. the change. To let people know, just to say, you know mm. what, I'm gonna, you know, I, I'm gonna take a year, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna run a half marathon by the end of mm. the year, or whatever the aspiration is, mm. and get your friends and community on board. So whether you're posting something on Instagram or whatever, people sort of applaud what you're mm. doing and say, you know, I did a 20 minute extra on my run today, and you get that kind of sense mm -hmm. of people have people have got your back and mm -hmm. they support you or join a group you know mm -hmm. i think the group motivation is very powerful mm. if we're letting ourselves down we can like oh whatever yeah. but if there's an expectation that people are expecting you to turn up to do something right. with them that's a real incentive to kind of get those sneakers on and to get out the door that really rings true actually um i think you have to be brave to tell people what your aspirations are if you're going to run a marathon because it's easier to break that promise and hide in shame by yourself. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, so I think that takes some bravery to, to do that. I but I think when you take that step, then you find support. Um, the other day, I really didn't want to go to the gym, but we'd all had these socks printed with uh, for a Christmas gift for our trainer with his face on them. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go because everyone was going and it was going to be so much fun. And I would have missed that class, but it was a group thing. Um, I didn't want to let anyone else down. I want to be part of something. Yeah, that, that sense of the group, mm -hmm. I think, is a really powerful dynamic mm -hmm. for motivation. You know, if it's just us, we can, you know, actually, oh, I'm exhausted, I can't do it. You know? mm -hmm. But actually, if we have a commitment to others, whatever that might be or mm -hmm. whatever that might look like, that really kind of helps us get over the line. Mm -hmm. And talking about um, commitment to others, um, I try, I'm, I'm sure my children are not listening, um, but when they do something small, I always want to say, oh, I really like the way you decorated that cake right. or that top you chose. It goes really well with, you know, your jeans or something. Just, um, or I really love that word you used. I, that's such a nice word to describe that, right. what, you know, whatever. Um, but I would never do that to myself. I wouldn't compliment myself all day like that. But I feel like maybe giving us, to, to get us into that positive, think about things I have done, you know, I mean, a few, no, many years ago, for Lent, I gave up sugar in my tea, which has changed my life because it really got me off a big sugar sure. problem. And um, but I never think to myself, well, I did that, so maybe I could do something else. But but what what kind of things can we do to should we write journals? Should we have positive like you know um, appreciation jars in a house? Is there anything that you would suggest that we can get ourselves? feeling good about ourselves? Well, I think, Morella, you just rather brilliantly answered your own question oh. because <laughs> I'm the one who says I never do. And it's like, well, the very fact you had that awareness, mm -hmm. you actually say, I'm kind of, I have that tendency to say, I would never do that to myself. I might do it to my kids. Mm. I might encourage them and praise them mm. and let them know when they've done something, which mm. I think is a real benefit for them. And actually just that awareness of going, I wonder if I could say that to myself. Mm. I wonder if I could say, actually, Morella, I did really good today. I didn't want to go to that class, yeah. but I made myself go. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was fun, and I'm really glad that I did it. Um, I have a task which I sometimes work with clients who maybe are in low mood or feeling very demotivated mm. or feeling anxious. Mm -hmm. And it's a daily task called EGS. And oh. I'm going to share it with everyone listening now because I think it's so powerful. I've used it myself. So it's an acronym. So EGS stands for enjoyment, gratitude and satisfaction. Okay. okay. So at the end of each day, just saying to yourself, what have I enjoyed today? Mm -hmm. What am I grateful for? Yep. And what am I satisfied with? it does not need to be big stuff. It can be tiny stuff. Wow. It can be the weather report said rain and actually it was dry, you know, so I'm grateful. Yeah. Um, I bought coffee this morning and the barista had a lovely smile on his face as he handed me my coffee. I enjoyed that. Yeah. You know, it can be really tiny stuff. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is that you notice them and at the end of each day, mm. you just write them down. So oh, okay. barista smile, yeah. didn't rain, you know, something, I, you know, I thought it was going to be late for the meeting and I got to the meeting on time. I'm satisfied I got to the meeting on yeah. time. So that could be your EGS one yeah. day. So it can be really small, everyday stuff. The key thing is you keep that by your bed. The first thing the following morning, oh. you read it through. Oh my gosh. Because often when we kind of go into that low mm. mood or sort of feeling a bit deflated, whatever, mm. we wake up in the morning like, ugh, you know, that kind of, mm. kind of icky feeling. Yeah. And suddenly you have this very powerful little tool just going, Oh yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. I'm grateful for that. And suddenly you kind of step out of bed with a much more positive mindset. Right. It doesn't instantly work. 
a week or 10 days of doing this daily task, I swear it will shift your mood. Gosh, that's amazing. So let you with your new year resolution mm -hmm. about fitness and health or whatever, mm -hmm. include, you know, I enjoyed that I made it to my class today. You know, yeah. I'm satisfied that I actually did an extra 10 minutes yeah. or whatever it is. And use that as a powerful tool at the end of each day. It literally takes moments and have it by your bed. It could even be written on your phone yeah. or on a little notepad and then just read it through before you go to the bathroom or make a cup of tea or whatever yeah. it is, yeah. your, your morning routine. Just do that first. Just read that through. So it's like a, it's like the caffeine kick kicks, get, it's wait, a little, some it's of like a little off, mental health it's kick start. Yeah. yeah, it's an emotional health kick start. Gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, I really um, recommend it. Yeah, that's and it. Um, li like you say, it's. Uh, can anyone do that? Like anyone, can my do children it. could do that. We can. Any, Kids we can do, do the family. It. And the, the, I think the really important thing to stress is like, I didn't enjoy anything today. Well, you probably did. You just didn't notice it. Right. 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 And it, the 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 point is, that it can be really small stuff. And I think it's a really powerful tool. So, you know, in a way, you could just say to myself, you know, have I had my eggs today? Yeah. So my EGS. Yeah. You know, what have I, you know, if I show my appreciation for what I've enjoyed, what I'm grateful for and what I'm satisfied with. I hope you've patented it, though. <laughs> okay, because that's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what about when we do really fall off the wagon? You know, we get a cold and so we don't feel like going to the gym and then we don't go for like two weeks. And then, then it's really hard. It's to hard. get back, yeah. how do we get back? That's a really good question. I think we remind ourselves of our goal. We okay. remind ourselves of the commitment that we made. We remind ourselves of the benefits we'd already begun to start feeling. Um, we might reach out to a friend to say, look, I feel really demotivated. You know, could you come to the gym with me? Or should we do that class together? Again, using your network mm -hmm. and using connection mm -hmm. to kind of help get you over the line. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really, I think also when we set um, goals and aspirations to, instead of sort of thinking, I'm going to do this every day no matter what, mm -hmm. knowing that actually, of course, there can be times when I'm actually, I am just too tired, right. or actually I had to take a, you know, a call at 8 a.m. and I couldn't make that call, right. so whatever it was, mm -hmm. you know, and that's okay to, to mm -hmm. be kind of gentle with yourself mm -hmm. uh, and not beat up on yourself if you don't make every single goal that you set out right. because t tomorrow's another day. Right. You just reset. It's absolutely fine. Do you think it's helpful to have different goals to say, I want to be healthier, um, but I also want to, you know, maybe have more see my friends more often. Do you think it's good to have one goal or should we try and have more than one goal so that we feel that our lives are sort of, if we're progressing in one area, maybe we'll, you know, that will help us? Yeah, I think that's an interesting, I think we're all different. I think some of us are more motivated with kind of a greater set of goals perhaps or, or a wider or a longer list. My personal feeling is to be a little cautious mm -hmm. about setting too many yeah you know, goals, I'm going to, you know, like the mm. to-do list with like 15 things on yeah. it. Maybe you just have three things on your to-do list, yeah. you know, it's like, because yeah. you're much more likely to achieve them. Because I think, going back to the point I was making earlier about the negative bias, Yes. once we said, in a sense, we can be unwittingly setting ourselves up for failure, mm -hmm. in which case what we're doing is playing into our own script. And our script is like, that's just not something I really want to do. So mm -hmm. I sort of set up an unrealistic goal that I know I'm not really going to achieve. And mm -hmm. then I go, well, at least I tried yeah. and I don't need to bother anymore because it's just, it, you know, it's not something I could ever do. Yeah. So I think, you know, be gentle with ourselves, but also mm -hmm. be a little bit, you know, it's a bit like running the marathon. So many of us carry that aspiration. It's a powerful, brilliant aspiration. Mm -hmm. But it's also a huge goal, mm -hmm. you know. So maybe the goal could be, at the end of the year, I'm going to run a half marathon or even uh -huh. like, you know, five miles, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a, it's a gentle and more realistic goal. And then maybe if I've done my five miles, maybe a year later, maybe I can think about the marathon. Right. You right. know, so that we don't, in a sense, set ourselves up for failure. I mean, that's not to knock anyone who is aspiring to do the mm -hmm. marathon. Good for you. And I'm sure that you will achieve it. Yeah. But I think, you know, to, in a sense, to not be too burdensome on ourselves about mm -hmm. unrealistic goals, I think is really helpful. And you talked about earlier about some goals don't have to be so defined. Some goals can be, you mentioned earlier about when you're unsure about whether to say yes or no to something, um, or someone's invited you somewhere. If you're erring on the side of, mm, I'll just stay home, get into my PJs, watch my favorite program, or um, to maybe say, some of those times I'm going to say yes. So that's not a very, it's not a specific weight goal or exercise challenge, but it's more of a, an approach or a disposition. Um, how do you 
come up with the right goals for you? Well, we're all different. Some of us really need very specific, you mm -hmm. know, by the end of March, I'm going to run that mile mm -hmm. in less than a certain number of minutes, whatever. Mm -hmm. That can be very motivating for some mm -hmm. people. I know myself very well. And actually that for me will just feel like an unnecessary burden. Right. You know, so I might have a much gentler, you know, aspiration such as um, I want to be fitter. Mm hmm. You know, which is really kind of open-ended, yeah. you know, and what that means may be a whole range of different things mm -hmm. from swimming to walking rather than taking the subway mm -hmm. to get to an appointment or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, li living a more active life mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean more hours at the gym. Right. Uh, it probably also means thinking more carefully about what I eat or, mm -hmm. or drink and so on as well. Uh, but to your point, I mean, you know, I, I moved to New York from the UK two and a half years ago and really had to challenge myself to really embrace what the city had to offer. I worked for myself, I needed to build a network, I mm -hmm. needed to make more both personal and professional connections. So for me, that aspiration of saying yes more was a very simple but subtle tool mm. to help me find more opportunity mm. without burdening myself with some you know, by March I need to have six new clients. Yeah. You know, because that would be like, potentially achievable or maybe not achievable. But if I hadn't achieved it, I could have kind of piled in on myself mm. about, you know, feeling not good enough or a bit of a failure or whatever. Right. Whereas just to say yes more was a very gentle way of opening up possibility. Right. And I have to say, it's really worked for me. Good, I'm good. not sure quite where it came <laughs> from, but it kind of popped into my head. And, you know, things are pretty good right now. Good, <laughs> and good. And working out, so yeah. You see, that's an interesting thing about knowing yourself well enough and figuring it out what works for you. Because for some people, they do need the, I need, you know, I need to have joined six clubs or three clubs. I need to have 10 more new friends. I need, some people are motivated like that. Some other people need just, um, like you say, just a different thought in their heads, a different attitude, a different approach, a different something that they can, a tool like that, that you could just use in any situation. It's a little bit like reframing. Mm -hmm. It's sort of reframing rather than very specific goal setting. Yeah. For yeah. me, that works, and I know that it works quite well for other people as mm. well. But to your point, you know, there's something about self-awareness which is mm. key to all of this. Mm. You know, how think about something in your past where you set out to achieve a goal and you achieved it. That's a good idea. What helped you get to that goal? Yeah. What helped you achieve it? Was it the fact you felt really supported by a network of people? Was it the fact that you really you are very self-disciplined and you can really put in the hours. Once mm. you've really set that kind of target, you can really kind of double down and, mm. and you know, that's great. Okay, so that's one of your skill sets. So you can probably right. use that again. You know, our successes and failures from the past are like a roadmap mm -hmm. that can really enlighten us about how we're likely or, or less likely to achieve our goals moving forward. That's true. So self-awareness is key, I think. And we all have that. We all have that. We yes. all have histories. We all have things that right. worked out or didn't work out mm -hmm. um, due to our involvement or lack of involvement with them. Mm. So just, you know, connect to your memories. R remind yourself. Mm. You know, when I really set out for a goal that I achieved, what what, yeah. what what was I drawing on? What what helped me get to that point? Right. Um, can I get to the? You know, can I draw on that mm -hmm. kind of? You know, my determination. I'm someone who's very determined, or I'm someone who's very competitive, or I'm mm -hmm. someone who, you know, likes routine. Yeah, maybe, and or like I or I just want to look great in photographs or whatever the yeah. motivation is. Yeah. You know, can you tap into that to really help you? motivate yourself moving forward. Do you think sometimes it's about whether it's an internal ex goal or an external goal? Sometimes I think that maybe we think, oh, I need to lose 10 pounds or I need to work out because other people or the social media or the media or right. TV or makes us think that think us, that's what we should do. Whereas if we really want something, do we have to really think about whether we really want it or whether we just feel it's kind of expected of us to say, we're going to get healthier. We're going, we're going to do plant-based eating if we, right. if we don't really want to. Yeah, yeah. Is that one of the challenges when a, we're sitting out? That's a out? really interesting point. I mean, I think to really define that's me, that social pressure, you know, mm -hmm. in a sense, we're all absorbing mm -hmm. images and information and having conversations with our friends and network and so on. Is it my idea that I want to be healthier? Or is it some kind of something that's coming in from outside mm -hmm. of me? It's, it's hard to say where those boundaries really are. Mm -hmm. um, however, we do know 
certain facts, mm -hmm. you know, that if we True. are, yeah. you know, not exercising, mm -hmm. if we're overweight, you know, you know, we're yeah, running we have risks. the numbers, you know, we have the numbers, you know, mm -hmm. that the facts are the facts. Yes. Um, so whether that incentive to take on board those facts and to use those to motivate ourselves to make change is coming from other people or coming from ourselves, ultimately we're giving ourselves the gift of better health. Right. And you know, um, sometimes you need that sort of check-in, that, um, that real health check-in, because I think when someone really talks to you about your cholesterol with the numbers and gives you and explains to you where you should be really for, to feel good, right. or they talk to you about blood pressure or having really good information about you, I think is very valuable because Absolutely. you really understand what you should do, why you should yeah. do it. And what's going to make a difference. What, and what's what is going to make help. you really feel better. Yeah. yeah. You know, not all of us would feel better trying to run a marathon. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, it just depends. And actually, is running a marathon always healthy for all of our bodies with kind of joints and knees? You know, there might be other kinds absolutely. of exercise which are much more beneficial to us. Absolutely. Um, and what about, we, we have only got a few minutes left, but um, can we start a resolution at any time of the year? Yes. Or does it have to be January? Do we have to wait now to 2021? All we have is now. All we have is now and the next moment. Mm -hmm. Wherever we are is wherever we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we could have fallen off that wagon. We could have started, you know, on the 1st of January with like, right. I'm going to do this every single day. And we haven't done it and we feel terrible about ourselves. Today is just another day. Right, it is. What was that thing we all grew up with as kids? You know, today is the first day of the rest of your life. I mean, right. it's kind of like a silly cliche in a way, but it's ultimately true. And I do like people say when they say Mondays are... New, uh, New Year's Day. They're like New Year's Day. Every Monday right. is a New Year's Day. That's nice. I it's like a, that. It's a different turn on a Monday. Yeah, we're just resetting. Exactly. I could talk all day. I've learned so much. Thank you so much. I hope everybody's really enjoyed um, the program today. Please do send in your questions. We really look forward to answering them and serving you, our community. Thank you.